Hey, what's up guys? OJ here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got some awesome information and we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. We're starting off with Chrono Cross the Radical Dreamers Edition on the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, PC, Xbox. Finally, we've got an update for this game that actually makes it a real and true remaster and best version of the game. For those who don't know, Chrono Cross is a PS1 classic back when it came out i think in early 2000 2001 it was one of those super late ps1 games and it's a semi-loose follow-up to the legendary chrono trigger and it was marred with all sorts of issues back when it launched last year but we finally have an update for the game that actually improves the frame rate all the way to 60 frames per second even on the nintendo switch version of the game with one exception of the final battle for the nintendo switch version which is at 30 frames per second but pretty much the whole game is at 60 frames per second now there's also some quality of life updates for the growth system for pip and other minor bug fixes as well but yeah people have been uploading footage it looks very smooth it plays smooth and it's finally giving people what chrono cross is all about and the fact that it's a true remaster now right it's actually better than the original because there was times with certain versions of the game depending on where you were in the game it would run worse than the ps1 version of the game so the fact they finally got this update out there i think is incredible for one preserving the legacy of what chrono cross was or chrono cross is because it gave people a bad impression of this game which people already had a bad impression of the game coming off of the incredible chrono trigger so the fact that they actually fixed it up here and made it so much better is good so if you haven't played chrono cross the radical dreamers edition yet i highly recommend it you get the game obviously you get some nice updates to it now you get the 60 frames for a second you get the radical dreamers kind of like visual novel sequel thingy that's in there as well so i think that it's pretty cool that they finally got this going some people were asking me on twitter you know what took them so long and everything and pretty much this is what square enix thinks of the chrono franchise at this point it's not really high priority or value at all they just don't think of it as a money maker that's the reason why there's been nothing for the chrono franchise in so long i mean they don't really do anything for this franchise we had to sit there and go through rumor after rumor and wait this long just to even get chrono cross updated at this point i mean this should have been already something that happened a long time ago with chrono cross coming to the systems but hey it is what it is i can't sit here and say that i'm upset with chrono cross and what they've done at this point now but let's go ahead and move on to the next topic here guys where we are going to be discussing a huge rumor with castlevania and potentially a big game coming to nintendo switch and more and also a remake of a classic so according to a new rumor that is out there konami is going to go pretty big at e3 this year an updated remake of metal gear solid 3 and a new castlevania game now very interesting here when it comes to this because apparently there's going to be quote pretty big presence at e3 this summer for konami and metal gear solid 3 could show up in castlevania as well and what i want to focus on is the new castlevania game potentially because it's been what a decade or so since we've seen anything from castlevania and it would be incredible if we did see something there now what we do know we know that the netflix series for castlevania has been incredible and has boosted the popularity and clout that castlevania has to an all-time high castlevania is still incredibly popular based on that five season series that it got with the netflix on top of that we do have the dead cells and castlevania dlc that i'm going to talk about in just a bit there's some new updates there but it does seem like konami has been slowly drip feeding and waiting for this moment to announce some big stuff with these two classic franchises that are still very valuable and can make them millions upon millions of dollars and no not in the pachinko business when it comes down to it so i'm looking forward to seeing what happens here i would love for there to be a big new castlevania game 2d bring it back nintendo switch playstation xbox pc i think that would be huge especially if it had like a sleek anime style to it like the netflix series i think that would be the perfect 
Castlevania game to bring back. Maybe you have some familiar faces like Alucard and more actually show up to this. I think that they should really play it safe but at the same time, stylize it. You know, give us that classic Castlevania with a few new things here and there, but give us that classic experience that everybody knows and loves. So I'm really hoping that this rumor does turn out to be true because Castlevania is classic. It is something that's synonymous with gaming, in my opinion. It's old school. It's been around for decades at this point. And the fact that we haven't seen anything from a franchise this good in a decade or so when it comes down to it, and the last thing that we got were the Castlevania Lords of Shadow, which they're not bad games at all. I actually like Lords of Shadow, but that's the last thing that we got was Lords of Shadow 2 and then pretty much nothing else, some mobile games or whatever it was. That's not a way for Castlevania to go out. We need to resurrect this franchise. So I'm really hoping that this rumor is true with Konami. And of course, Metal Gear Solid 3, if that got a remake, that would be incredible. Many people feel that is the best Metal Gear Solid game of all time when it comes to mechanics and story and cutscenes. So if they remade that with modern graphics, I'm guessing it would be PS5. That would be just super incredible and very, very impressive and make people really happy because the Metal Gear Survive, I mean, that game was terrible, right? That game went out in a blaze of shame. So let's hope that both of these things happen here. But what we do know is happening for sure is Dead Cells. But now we actually have some awesome information with this game because... Dead Cells is actually getting playable Richter. It's not just the Dead Cells guy, you know, with an outfit on. Yes, Richter is coming to Dead Cells along with the Return to Castlevania DLC. We got the final teaser, which you guys are checking out right here. That Richter mode is looking incredible. And this is definitely leading me to believe that there is some truth to the rumors with Castlevania, like I alluded to before here. Developers Motion Twin and Evil Empire have released the final teaser trailer for Dead Cells downloadable content, Return to Castlevania, revealing a new mode in which Castlevania Symphony of the Night's Richter is playable. Now here are some more details on this mode that you can use Richter in, which I'm very much interested in. Available only in a secret level located somewhere deep in the unwavering dark of Dracula's castle, players will be able to play Richter mode, which lets them control the age-old Castlevania protagonist for a nostalgia trip that hits harder than the vampire killer. Use Richter's classic moveset inspired by Castlevania Symphony of the Night and whip the undead out of shape. Today's new trailer shows off this mode in action, complete with jumping whip attacks and other classic abilities taken straight from the Castlevania franchise. For bonus nostalgia points, players will even have to destroy candles and collect hearts, which are used as ammunition for some weapons, with a boss fight against Medusa and a bevy of enemies to slay. You'll be glad you scored every inch of Castle Dracula. Today's trailer also included a more in-depth look at the ways players will be able to slay the beheaded throughout Dead Cells Return to Castlevania, showing off the Vampire Killer, Throwing Axe, and more in action. The animated skeletons and living suits of armor shambling through the castle's halls don't stand a chance. Eagle-eyed players, as well as hardcore Castlevania fans, may also recognize some familiar set pieces throughout the expansion. Be sure not to leave an inch of the castle unexplored. Whether you're filling the shoes of Richter or using his and Alucard's weapons as the beheaded, Dracula and his old pal's death won't know what's coming to him. So the Dead Cells downloadable content Return to Castlevania is due out March 6th for $9.99. And of course, Dead Cells is available pretty much on every single modern platform here and also PC. Very excited about this myself. I'm a huge Castlevania fan. I've played most of the games. I love Symphony of the Night. It's my favorite Castlevania game of all time. So I am really looking forward to this game here. And I love the DS trilogy of Castlevania games. They're really good too. So really looking forward to this. I think that it does lead on to believe that we're going to be getting a bit more. I think that with the trifecta here of a new Castlevania game, the Netflix series, and also this, there's enough to resurrect 
Castlevania and get players excited and interested again in the franchise. So I'm definitely looking forward to this quite a bit. But one thing that a lot of people aren't looking forward to is Nintendo confirming that they are skipping E3. But there's been a whirlwind of information that has came about this because let's go ahead and first start with the report that happened out of VGC and other places, other journalists, people talked about how Nintendo is skipping E3 along with Microsoft and Sony. And it was, I think, Video Games Chronicle and Andy Robinson that reported that Nintendo doesn't really have much to show in the second half of the year, which is one of the reasons why they're skipping E3. But we've got information on that as well. So we need to kind of dissect all of this so let's first talk about e3 in itself so nintendo has confirmed that they will not attend e3 2023 in a statement today quote we approach our involvement in any event on a case-by-case -case basis and are always considering various ways to engage with our fans the company said since this year's e3 didn't fit into our plans we have made the decision to not participate However, we have been and continue to be a strong supporter of the ESA and E3. Now, this is a confirmation of the report once again that we did get back in January. So they're just confirming it now at this point. But pretty much there was videos and people talked about how Nintendo probably is going to be at E3 along with Microsoft and Sony. And there's a bevy of reasons why obviously flying out executives, paying for boot space, the cost that it is to actually do E3 is a lot more than what people expect but i think that with nintendo directs obviously nintendo has circumvented a number of things in terms of having to rely upon any other actual industry event in order to get information and marketing but it's something that nintendo usually participates in now once again when those reports came out there were people like andy robinson from vgc which he's awesome i do enjoy his um content and the website and everything so make sure you guys go check it out but he actually stated that nintendo doesn't have much to show at e3 and it's interesting now because now there's a little bit of backtracking going on because recently in a tweet he said this that said there's a growing suggestion that instead of a weaker 2023 lineup as I first reported, its games might just fall later into this year. So it does seem like there are some backtracking going because once again, at first it was, oh, well, Nintendo's not going to E3 because they have no games because it's done. They have no games, which many people anticipated or said, okay, well, they're just going to be getting ready for the next gen Nintendo Switch, which still could be happening, which I do think Nintendo is preparing and getting ready for that. But now it's like, oh, well, maybe there's some more stuff here. Maybe I spoke a little bit too soon, which it happens, guys. Sometimes you get some information and that information turns out to not be right or maybe some other things come out. But I don't think Nintendo would leave the rest of the year with nothing. I just personally feel that Nintendo definitely has at least two to three big games for the second half of the year. I think that Pikmin 3, that's one of them that necessarily wasn't counted as a big game, but it's there in the second half. I think it's July for that title. And I think that Metroid Prime 4 could be another big game as well. Metroid Prime 2 and 3, how does Nintendo actually re-release those games? I think that's also going to be something big too. Plus, there's also other games that maybe we just don't know about at this point that could be coming back so we're just gonna have to wait and see how all of this turns out but it looks like there's some backtracking going on and it looks like nintendo's going to do their own thing when it comes to this summer with the nintendo direct or with a partner direct or whatever they're going to be working on i'm not sure what's happening here but i think that there could be other titles that we just don't know about that just pop up at a nintendo direct mini or a partner showcase or something i'm guessing that maybe even a kid icarus uprising sequel or kid icarus uprising remaster that could show up i mean there's been so many different games out there that have been rumored over the course of the life of the nintendo switch or in the last couple years so i do think all of that is possible but we're just gonna have to wait and see i'm just excited to see what else nintendo has but really all eyes right now are on tears of the kingdom that is the big game for the year and it's probably going to be many people's game of the year 
Plus, we've got other games as well coming. We just had Kirby drop, Octopath Traveler 2 dropped as well. Plus, there's Bayonetta, and there's also Advance Wars. We finally got a release date for that. So there's definitely games to play, new titles to get out there this year. So it's going to be pretty cool. I think across the board, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, they all have some good stuff for this year. But speaking of some good stuff for this year, we've got a PS1 and Sega Saturn Classic that's actually making its way over to the Nintendo Switch and also PlayStation, which is incredible. And I never really knew much about this game. And it's getting a remake, and it's called Atelier Marie Remake, The Alchemist of Salborg, which will launch officially for PS4, PS5, Switch, and PC via Steam on July 13th. Now, this game is the original first game of the Atelier franchise. I mean, there's so many of these games, but this is the original game released back in like 1997. I know it was like mid to late 90s. I think it was on the PS1 and then it got ported over to the Sega Saturn. And then I think it was later on the Dreamcast. It was on PC as well and also PlayStation 2, but it never got an official localization outside of Japan, believe it or not. Although there is a fan translation for the game, but they're finally bringing Atelier Marie over to modern platforms which is pretty cool that you can play the first game in the series so in the west atelier marie remake the alchemist of salberg will only be available digitally in both standard and digital deluxe editions you can't import play asia so there is a physical edition you'll just have to go through play asia to import that or wherever you go to import games now in japan the standard edition you will be able to get that there's a premium box and all sorts of stuff the digital deluxe comes with another look costume set and extra little goodies here and there and i never knew about this game i mean they're doing like a chibi style graphical upgrade and remake i went back and looked at the original game and i'm like okay this is a pretty faithful remake and it actually has a really nice artistic and sleek look to it i do like what they've done here and the fact that they're bringing back the original atelier game is pretty cool because we have atelier Ryza 3 that game is coming out very soon here in march so i think now that they're done with that in terms of the Ryza series maybe they're bringing back some of the other games and getting ready for their next big atelier game and the next step for the atelier franchise so it's cool that they brought this one back once again it's always good to get those games that were never localized or that were just obscure ps1 from that generation or sega saturn anytime that you get something from sega saturn brought over or remade it's a dub for gamers there's still a lot of good games that are locked in on that platform a lot of good games from that era the ps1 sega saturn sega cd you know these systems back then there are games that have not been localized or games that have not been brought over yet so it's good to see that some of these titles are coming over but this is awesome all around but what are your thoughts on this guys when it comes to this rpg nintendo switch news and more if you want more content on rpgs nintendo switch stuff check out the link in the description or right here on your page i have plenty of awesome videos for you guys to watch if you're into nintendo rpgs and more so thank you so much for watching i appreciate it and we'll see you for the next video peace